Hey guys, welcome back to The Bench. Today we're going to be rocking a basic straight letter, one of my favorite series to do here on the channel. Way to give back to you guys. But before we get into it, I want to throw a question your guys' way. I almost stumbled on my sentence there, my apologies. But let me know, would you guys like full-length piece videos, as well as, like, the sort of format that we're doing here, so you'd get two videos, essentially, out of one piece? The reason I ask, because this piece took me pretty much no time at all to do on a wall. So let me know in the comments down below. So with this name exchange, I wanted to try something a little bit different. You see, the name E's has, well, two E's in it. And right off the bat, I knew I didn't want these two letters to be the same. It's really easy to flow a name using letter uniformity and similarity. Just make both of the E's duplicates of one another and you're set to go. But I wanted to go ahead and try something a little bit different. I wanted to focus on flow with this piece, but not with letter uniformity and similarity, but instead with line uniformity and similarity. So this whole entire piece is built with that premise in mind. Also, don't mind the blue outline over the yellow. I was just kind of having fun. That's literally it. I just wanted to like outline it with a different color just for fun. So that's what we did. Now check this out. A lot of you guys ask me, how do I go ahead and proportion my pieces on walls once I've actually drawn them in the sketchbook? And these little dots you see right there, don't, don't mind this one right here. That's me just drawing smiley faces. This dot right there and this last one over here are all how I kind of measure out and proportion my pieces. Let me explain. So these three dots are a great way in order to proportion your pieces. You see the top dot is our cap height. You'd establish the cap height in your sketch and you'd come over to the wall and you'd just draw a little tiny dot just about with your hand over your head or as high as your hand can reach. Either one of these works depends on your personal preference. Here we have it just a little bit over my head. And you could draw a little dot right there. That's your cap height. Your mean line is this center dot right here. And this goes to about where your collarbone is. The mean line, for those of you guys who don't know, is going to be the center of your letters roughly. You'll notice in this piece, my mean line is actually a little higher than the center of my letters, but you also notice that my S and my A reach up to that mean line in certain areas. So once again, that center dot is about roughly the center of your letters. While this bottom dot right here, this bad boy is our baseline. The baseline being where the bottoms of your letters are going to go ahead and reach. And this is just about your arm in a relaxed position. Mine is a little bit higher than that. While my dot is a little bit higher than that, the letters themselves go a little bit lower than that. That's more so because once I put the dot down, I realized it was a little bit too high up and then I just mentally made note of that and did the letters a little bit lower than that. Now as far as how wide your letters should be, you are going to want the letters to be proportioned to their actual height. So the width should be proportioned to the height. With that in mind, this is still largely personal preference. Some graffiti artists like their letters to be a little bit on the larger side, while some like a little bit on the smaller side. I find that I personally land somewhere in between to a little bit larger, but in this specific piece, I actually went much smaller than I typically do. We can measure this based on our arm length. You'll notice I throw my arm out to the side, and while my fingertips are on one side of the letter, the letter reaches to just about my elbow. So that's about half arm's length per letter. And we go down each letter and you can see this is consistent. Each letter is about half arm's length. You typically get used to this by muscle memory depending on your own personal preference. So it's not really something that you have to measure out once you get used to it, but do keep it in mind it is a great way to proportion your letter. Once again, I need to stress the height of your letter should be proportioned to the width of your letters. Some graffiti artists have a personal preference in order to go ahead and keep the letter full arm's length, or some graffiti artists like to go a little bit larger than that, where they go full arm's length and then over to the collarbone. And then some go arm's length and a half from one arm all the way to the other elbow, while others go two arm's length. Once again, personal preference on this one. Let's get back to the painting. Yo, it is, it is chilly out here. I, <laughs> I suck with the cold weather, man. I do not do well with cold weather. That reminds me, man, that there was this one time way back, a little bit of a story time for you, but I remember I was mentoring this one kid and back then it was kind of a tradition that the person who was mentoring would take their Power Ranger, that's what we called the person we were mentoring, we would take our Power Ranger to the wall and we would do their lines. And then the person that was getting mentored would do the fill-in. It was never done for any like particular reason, it was just tradition. And also, back then, when you were in a crew, you helped one another do your guys' pieces. It was all a group effort. That was like the whole point of a crew, you know, you helped each other. There was plenty of times at walls where I would do my partner's lines or they would do mine and like we would fill each other's pieces in whatnot just to help each other get the job done. And to be honest, I don't feel like I see as much of that nowadays, especially when I talk to people in crews, it doesn't feel like there's as much camaraderie. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, I mean, you guys let me know in the comments down below if that's how that rocks in your crew. But I remember this one specific time, me, my partner, and this kid I was mentoring went out at like 10 p.m. to this random wall, and I rocked this guy's lines so that way he could go ahead and fill it in. And man, it was brutally cold that night. I was rocking my own piece as well, and it was pitch black. I mean, 
10 o'clock in like the middle of December, right? It's dark out. So back then when I would like know I was gonna go out late and I knew it was gonna be too dark to see, I would literally memorize my piece. I didn't bring a sketch and back then cell phones weren't as high tech as they are now. They didn't have a massive flashlight attached to them. So I really wasn't about to use that for a light source, right? So I had to memorize my piece and do it in the dark. It came out pretty nice, I'll be honest. It didn't, it didn't look too bad. A little bit of sloppy line work here and there, but I mean, you know, that's to be expected when it's freezing cold outside in the middle of December pitch black. But painting here today, in much better conditions, mind you, just reminded me of that night out. I mean, it was a fun, fun time. I remember we went back to that wall the next day in order to see our pieces, and man, it... it Nothing compares to that, really, not, nothing compares to that. That's just something you don't get by painting a legal spot like this, right? Not to say that this isn't fun, because I'm having a blast doing this, but man, it certainly brought back some memories. Last time I was at this wall, I was, I was sitting here contemplating what colors am I gonna go ahead and make this? Today, I literally walked in here, picked up a can, I was like, all right, I got two cans of this, one can, half a can, cool, dope, throw a cap on here, we're filling this in. And I, <laughs> that's literally all the thought I gave this. It's cold out here, man, I'm not trying to go ahead and freeze. Now I think for this piece, we're gonna go ahead and outline it with a dark blue. I don't know why that sounds good to me, but we're gonna go ahead and try it out and see what happens. I kind of wanted to go ahead and play around with a purple, but I'll be honest, I want to use that purple for something else. I, I kind of want to rock that purple with the pink can that I have. So I'm saving that, I'm saving. I also thought about just using black because we already have dark blue, you know, in, in the actual buff paint itself, but screw it, dark blue, we're doing it. We're, we're, <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead and throw it on the wall, have a good time, and if it, you know, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, we'll figure something out right there's no need to stress about it, it ain't that serious <laughs> Alright, so I didn't want to leave you guys on this piece without explaining how it is I used line uniformity and similarity in order to go ahead and fold these bad boys. Because after all, that was the whole entire, like, premise of this piece. So for those guys who don't know much about flow and how it works and functions, I have an entire video dedicated to that somewhere in the top of, you know, the cards and whatnot. But check it out. Line uniformity is proximity based, and line uniformity describes when two lines are uniform or similar to one another and as a result they flow. So the trick behind line uniformity and similarity for letters is you're going to be positioning one letter closer to another letter that way you can get their lines closer to one another so that they flow it's this kind of uniformity that is really the glue behind graffiti in general it's actually the same premise that cursive follows and why cursive flows so nicely cursive admittedly also uses momentum flow which is admittedly not used all that much in pieces although it can be like this piece right here that I did so think about that next time next time you're doing a piece try to make lines similar to one another and position them close to one another they don't even have to be all that big you just need to be able to link them together this is the whole reason why we put this where we did. That way it can link these vertical lines to this part. And just like this interior detail, the reason we put this down here is the same reason we put this up here. Because we're trying to link this vertical line to this end of the E, but they're too far away. So we need another similar line in order to link them together. And that just helps to increase flow. Once again, there's a lot more different flow lines throughout the piece, but that's a good example. All right, before we check out today's piece, let me know in the comments down below what your tag name is. That way I can, you know, maybe hit up your name for the next name exchange video. Now here's the pieces you guys did for the name exchange. And here's my final piece. That pretty much wraps up today's video, dudes. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a massive like. This was a bunch of fun to do. I I'm telling you, this is like my favorite series in general. Just because, you know, it, it gives me a chance not only to play with paint on a wall and have a good time, but also to give back to you guys. So please, by all means, join in on the fun. And if you're new here, subscribe to the Smart Graffiti community anywhere online. We got the best graffiti tutorials you can possibly find. We got those right up here. And on the bottom, we got more graffiti content. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next week.